So with a Bitcoin ETF seemingly right around the corner, we don't know if it's going to happen on Wednesday or January 10th or in March. But the question is, is what will the message be for the large institutions like the Black Rocks, the Fidelities and the ARK to get people into the door who don't believe into Bitcoin? And I think this question was actually answered. There was a video that was put out by Simply Bitcoin. Uh, this is Preston Pish. Uh, he is a Bitcoin advocate. And what he says in this minute video is, I think, going to turn the tide from when people actually hear this message. So just take a listen. Listen to this portfolio construction. You can, because Bitcoin operates in four-year periods of time with the halving event, okay, I've, I believe that if somebody's buying Bitcoin and holding it for four years plus, it's an investment. I think anything under four years gets more speculative, especially if you start going under a year. So let's just say you take any four-year holding period over the last, since, since Bitcoin had a price, and you compare that to the S&P 500, but you do it by adjusting your sizing like they preach in business school, right? So listen to these two different portfolios. Portfolio one is a 2% allocation to Bitcoin, 98% cash, and you compare it to 100% allocation. The second portfolio would be 100% allocation to the S&P 500. Your performance is better with the 2% Bitcoin allocation. Over, you can pick the four-year period of time. It doesn't matter if you pick a top and you go back four years or you pick a bottom and you go back four years or somewhere in between. You can pick any four-year period you want in Bitcoin's history, okay? And compare that to a four-year period in the S&P 500. The performance is going to be higher, around 50 to 80% annualized compound annual growth rate with a 2%, okay? And your volatility is only 1.4% annualized, okay? It's similar to the S&P 500. You're about a 50% annualized performance with the S&P, 100% well, in the S&P 500. But your annual volatility is 20%, which is 14 times higher than a 2% allocation in Bitcoin. I think this is so important for portfolio construction going into 2024. So I like that. Four years, just take a look at what it is and just go four years back. And it doesn't matter if when people come into BlackRock or to Fidelity or whatever else, and maybe they do are actually at the top. And it's like, well, you know, Bitcoin today is 100K. That's not a price prediction. I'm just saying. But if they go back four years, whatever that 100K is, they're going to see that, you know what, uh, this has done quite well regardless of the time frame and they can go back four years and four years and four years and it makes a heck of a lot of sense but what he said there i think is what the message will probably be or incorporated in some way into getting people to understand about bitcoin and getting them to say well is this really the safe because i you know i hear about this and whatever and the volatility and he talks about the volatility perfectly and then of course, people will say, what about S&P 500? That's the, that's the safest thing that's out there. It is the safest thing out there if you're talking about like annualized year over year per chance. But if you're looking to grow, I think what the message will be is like, look, you don't have to put 100% into it. Just do like 2 to 5%. And I think that'll be it. But to really take a look at that volatility, uh, we, we can take a look at Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. We take a look at the volatility as far as S&P 500, the volatility time frame of 30 days. Well, yes, we can see that, yes, it's very... It's actually very volatile, S&P 500. You know, there's a there's a range of, you know, 2% to 1% to 0.83. Let's just smooth this out a little bit. Let's just take it 365 days and kind of smooth it all out for the volatility itself. And we can see that, yeah, the, it's still volatile. If you take it like, you know, over these, uh, this, this annual period, 1% here, 1.3%, uh, which is not bad. Let's be honest. It's pretty good. But this is going all the way back to like the 1930s. Of course, that was the Great Depression so on and forth, so forth. But it does happen. So when people say, ah, you know, Bitcoin is so volatile, Bitcoin's not volatile. It's the people that hold Bitcoin that's volatile. And we take a look also at Bitcoin itself, we can kind of smooth it out. But yes, there's a little bit more volatility, but I mean, the gains itself are, they really do speak for everything and it speaks volume. So there's this part. Yes, it's it, it may have some more volatility here and there along the way. But again, taking over four years, it's a lot different. And then I think all they really have to do is just show them this website. This is a website called Priced in Bitcoin. And this is from uh, Sam, my financial friend. Great, uh, great YouTube video uh, channel. You can check it out. But What's great about this is that it shows you over a time period how you would actually value things in Bitcoin. And just to give you a sense of what this is, it states, how do you calculate the price of an asset in Bitcoin? And it says the homepage shows prices in Bitcoin or SAS rather than US dollars. The price of an asset in dollars is divided by the price of Bitcoin in dollars. For example, let's say gold, $2,000. And one Bitcoin is 40 grand. The price of gold, the dominant Bitcoin is 0 0.05 or 5 million Satoshi. So there's taking the actual asset divided by Bitcoin over time. So we take a look at that and go, okay, well, let's just take iShares, which is the, the uh, treasury bond ETF. And if we're denominating things in Bitcoin, we can see that, all right, it's a little bit higher. Actually, let me let me turn on the fiat option here. And you can do a lot of things. This is a free website. 
I will link it in the description. It makes a lot of sense. But just see right here, like as things go down, you can see that uh, on 2013, obviously as the price in dollars of Bitcoin goes up, you need less Bitcoin to buy these things. And of course, things go down. So we can see a big drop off in 2013. Of course, all time highs. Again, a four year cycle, 2017, again, all time highs. And there's another big, massive monster dip over here in 2021, April, and so on and so forth. So, and of course, it'll fluctuate just a little bit. But my favorite thing here is we talked about this yesterday is real estate. So if you come over here and click on housing, and you take a look at United States median new home. And let's let's uh, take this all data that we can possibly get to 2012. Let's turn on fiat. And you can see that, uh, again, and this is, I think, the message that, that they should be sending is like is telling people like, look, there's this thing called inflation. And we know that the S&P 500 does well in the different commodities. And you can compare it again. And, of course, they have gold in this, this website as well. But you can just see that over time that the price of a house, of course, increases. But the purchasing power that you have is obviously much, much greater magnitude massively when you hold Bitcoin looped off over here in 2016 and then just never let up. And of course, we can see that uh, the housing prices just went uh, ridiculous. And of course, here's a here's a nice little uh, touching point of 2020 when the we had the uh, corona sickness. And of course, it just blew up. And of course, if we just would have held Bitcoin at that point, it would have been a lot better off. And I think that is the message moving forward. Now, if this is too confusing for, I think, for some people to say like this, like simpletons like myself, like, look, Jerry, uh, if you have 20 bucks in 1980, this is, you know, a $20 in 2011 is what you'd get roughly would be these amount of groceries. And then, of course, in just 10 short years, one of these Bitcoin could get you a really nice car like a Tesla, 67,000 or something like that. But in 2000, 20 bucks, couldn't really done too much as far as shopping. And then today, I think if you go to the grocery store, how much is 20 bucks gonna get you? Not too much. Of course, Bitcoin accelerates. And in 2030, we think it could buy you an entire house, which of course that price is going up, but it's up to you. So again, I think this is a, this is a great selection of uh, what they'll actually say to move things forward. But let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But I will say this, it's not just about Bitcoin. You can also take a look at the ecosystem that is Bitcoin, Stacks. Now, Stacks is a layer two solution for Bitcoin. It's also the smart contract layer. And when I take a look at this today, and I'm like, wow, is there a spot ETF on, on Stacks going on? It's up 10% in one day. Everything else is dropping. Even Bitcoin uh, was a little bit down today, which is kind of weird. But again, if you're like, you know what? I love Bitcoin. I want to go do Bitcoin. Maybe this is what you should look into. Now, Stacks, I've been uh, stacking Stacks for quite some time. I actually bought it a long time ago. It's done extremely well in my portfolio. Uh, but this could be why. Bitcoin L2 Stacks rises 10%. Here's what's happening. Stacks gained popular light in 2023 on the back of the rise and adoption of Bitcoin ordinals. Again, another thing to actually get into. Stacks Foundation come up with the Nakamoto upgrade in its roadmap. This boost would come with faster block generation, improved security, and SBTC, or Stacks Bitcoin launch. So that's exactly what the Nakamoto upgrade is going to do. The upgrade will allow users to represent their Bitcoin holdings also in the form of SBTC on the Stacks blockchain. Again, it's layer two. Nakamoto upgrade will still is still in the test net stage. However, the Stacks Foundation had earlier mentioned that it plans to compete or complete the upgrade before the next Bitcoin halving. And, and it says here, if that actually happens, then the price of stacks could supremely rally before things such happen. And just as a reminder, uh, the Bitcoin halving is roughly four months away. So if you were looking at something to invest into, I can't give you financial advice, but I'm a financial advisor, maybe I would look into little stacks and ordinals and things like that. If you are super convinced that Bitcoin is the only way to go, me personally, I diversify, but that's just me. And then lastly, I will just give a shout out to some, one altcoin out there. And this is from uh, Nikki Watkins from World Mobile Token. And uh, they're on the Cardano Foundation. And it's that's uh, install a node on Android, connect it and earn daily crypto rewards. No magic and earn money, just real world revenue for providing services to the world mobile network. I will link this tweet in the description below. You can see what he's talking about. But again, pretty interesting as a real world use case connecting the unconnected. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. But that's it for today. I thank you so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.